Amid mounting Western sanctions, Russia's aviation sector is making a bold statement. The United Aircraft Corporation, or UAC for short, has surprised the industry by filing a patent for a new wide-body aircraft aimed directly at rivals like the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, a benchmark in modern midsize air travel. This isn't just about reducing reliance on foreign technology. It's about pushing the boundaries and potentially overtaking the West. So what is this new plane, and why could it reshape the future of commercial aviation? Let's find out. Russia's aviation industry is going through one of its most turbulent times. After the war in Ukraine, Western sanctions have dealt a heavy blow, cutting off vital supplies and isolating Moscow from the global aerospace network. With limited options, the country has been forced to look inward, building its own aircraft from scratch. While projects like the Sukhoi Superjet and MC-21 have helped fill the gap in the regional and narrow-body markets, Russia still faces a major gap in the wide-body segment. Currently, the aging four-engine Ilyushin IL-76 remains the only wide-body in production. A powerful machine, but far from a match for modern Western airliners. For a time, Moscow was banking on the grandiose CR-929 project, a joint venture with China's Comac, launched in 2016 to compete with the Airbus A330neo and Boeing 787 Dreamliner. The partnership started strong and by 2019, design work was well underway, suppliers had been selected, and prototypes were undergoing wind tunnel testing. But as usual, cracks began to appear. Disagreements over specifications and intellectual property combined with the COVID-19 pandemic and tightening Western sanctions stalled the project. Cut off from key Western components, progress stalled pushing any potential test flights beyond 2028. By mid-2023, Russia's UAC officially withdrew, and Comac took over renaming the plane the C929 with Air China as the launch customer. Since then, Russia's role has been reduced to that of a peripheral parts supplier rather than a true collaborative partner. However, Moscow's ambitions to regain its status as an aviation power have not faded. For the Kremlin developing a domestic wide-body airliner, is not just an industrial goal, but a matter of national pride. Reports suggest that the Russian Defense Ministry plans to launch R&D efforts in 2026, marking the first real step towards this goal. However, the challenge ahead is enormous. Building a competitive wide-body jet requires massive financial resources, advanced materials, a stable manufacturing ecosystem, and technologies that have long relied on Western expertise, all of which are limited by sanctions. Emerging from these challenges is a new vision. The WBLA, a next-generation long-range widebody designed to carry passengers' cargo and equipment across continents. More than a business jet, it represents a bold statement proof that Russia still aims to be on par with Western aerospace giants. So what makes the WBLA such a potential disruptor? Before we get deeper, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe for more updates. Your support means a lot. Though full details remain under wraps, early reports paint an ambitious picture of Russia's next-generation wide-body aircraft. According to official documents, the jet will come in three distinct versions, the WBLR A500, a shorter model seating around 236 passengers, the WBLR 600, a standard variant with 281 seats, and the WBLR 700, a stretched configuration accommodating up to 320 passengers. Each will boast impressive range figures, 13 600 km, 12 and 1000 km, and 10 300 km respectively, allowing them to fly non-stop across oceans and compete directly in the long-haul arena historically ruled by Airbus and Boeing. Even more striking these numbers slightly, outperform China's C-19-2-9, which is designed to carry about 280 to 400 passengers over a range of about 12,000 km. But the true story lies deeper than size or range. The secret weapon of the WBLR is its technology, 
Engineers are said to be using advanced polymer composite materials, reducing structural weight cutting fuel consumption and lowering maintenance costs. On paper, the WBLR's performance metrics are bold, 3% lower ownership costs, 6% lower direct operating expenses, and a remarkable 15-17% to reduction in cost per seat kilometer compared to Boeing's 7879 Dreamliner. If these claims hold up, the Dreamliner, long considered the gold standard of efficiency, could finally be facing a genuine challenger. This development also signals a major shift in Russia's aviation strategy. After years of frustration and delays in the CR-929 partnership with China-Moscow, seems determined to go its own way. While Comac continues to wrestle with supply chain bottlenecks and uncertainty about the C929's first flight, Russia's WBLR represents a bold move toward self-reliance. It's not just competition, it's a declaration of independence. Government support for the project appears strong. Minister of Industry and Trade Anton Alakanov recently confirmed that his team is reviewing critical technical aspects, including aerodynamic design, structural efficiency, and engine performance. The final choice of power plant remains undecided, though most speculation points to the PD-35, a homegrown engine designed to rival Western heavyweights. Looking ahead, Alakanov revealed plans to begin R&D initiatives in 2026, marking the official start of development. A precise first flight date hasn't been confirmed, but one thing is certain this is more than a new aircraft. It's a symbol of revival, a declaration that Russia intends not just to participate, but to compete head-on with the world's leading manufacturers. So as two ambitious programs, China's C929 and Russia's WBLR prepare to take shape, the stage is set for a new chapter in aerospace rivalry. Which one will soar higher? Share your thoughts below. Behind the impressive technical ambitions of Russia's new wide-body aircraft lies a maze of challenges that could decide the fate of the entire project. In theory, the goal is clear to produce a modern long-range competitor capable of matching the capabilities of Airbus and Boeing. In reality, however, the road ahead is fraught with obstacles, many of them amplified by the continuing weight of Western sanctions, which have cut Russia off from key components, technologies, and expertise. The most immediate and urgent threat is the country's ability to scale up production while mastering highly complex aviation technologies. Designing the aircraft itself while a colossal engineering feat is only the first step. Turning the blueprints into a reliable mass-produced jet requires a tightly coordinated industrial ecosystem. A network of suppliers, advanced manufacturing facilities, and precision engineering capabilities that can perform on par with Western aviation powers. At the heart of this challenge is the PD-35 engine, the heart of the project. Developing a large, high-thrust, long-life jet engine is an extremely complex and expensive project. Every turbine, every alloy, every system must meet exacting standards, and even small flaws can affect the aircraft's performance, safety, and operational life. In addition to the engine, Russia must also produce or replace a range of Western components that are no longer available. These include advanced electronics, flight control systems, hydraulic systems, and advanced composite materials, all of which are critical to performance efficiency and safety. Each alternative carries risks, quality control issues, supply chain disruptions, and potential delays. The total cost of the project is huge, likely running into tens of billions of dollars, and sustaining such a financial burden amid ongoing sanctions is no easy task. Even with government support, budget pressures could increase if technical problems arise, straining resources, and delaying key milestones. If Russia's ambitions extend beyond its domestic footprint, the challenge will be even greater. To sell the WBLA internationally, the aircraft must be certified by major global regulatory bodies, such as ICAO, FAA, or ASA. 
The process is notoriously rigorous, requiring not only transparency and strict safety standards, but also a long track record of manufacturing quality and reliability. Criteria Western regulators would be expected to scrutinize when it comes to a Russian-built aircraft. Without this certification, the aircraft's operational range would be severely limited, with sales largely limited to domestic or allied airlines. In such a scenario, global competitors would be expected to be limited to a regional scope, with market potential diminished and strategic impact diminished. Of course, if the WBLA were primarily for domestic use, these limitations would no longer matter, but they cannot be ignored if Moscow is to assert its position on the global aviation scene. The road ahead is not only bumpy, but also fraught with technical, financial, and political obstacles. Success will require overcoming some of the most complex technical challenges in modern aviation, maintaining a resilient supply chain in a sanctions environment, and securing sustainable funding for a project of unprecedented scale. Any misstep, be it production delays, cost overruns, or regulatory rejections, could derail the entire program. Yet despite these formidable hurdles, Russia may possess unique advantages that give it a chance to win. Its deep knowledge of aircraft manufacturing, decades of experience in large-scale airframe construction, and strong government prioritization of strategic aerospace programs all offer potential leverage. There is also the possibility that having exited international partnerships, Russia could now pursue its own technological solutions, optimizing design and production on its own terms. Russia's new wide-body aircraft project is turning geopolitical isolation into an opportunity through its market strategy and targeted pricing. Rather than compete directly in Western markets like Europe or North America, where airlines are tightly tied to Boeing and Airbus supply chains. Russia is focusing on areas where it can really make an impact. The first target is the domestic market, where sanctions have crippled access to Western-made jets and spare parts. For Russian airlines struggling to maintain aging fleets, the new wide body offers a vital path to modernization and self-sufficiency on long-haul flights. The second target is the BRICS and SCO nations. Countries like China, India, Iran, and several countries in Africa and Latin America. Many of these countries are actively looking for alternatives to Western aircraft while strengthening political and economic ties with Moscow. The new Russian jet fits perfectly into this context, offering a combination of accessibility and strategic partnerships. The third area is sanctioned or isolated countries, including Iran and Venezuela for whom the aircraft is not just a means of transportation. It is a diplomatic bridge. By providing modern aviation solutions outside the control of the West, Russia uses the aircraft as a form of economic diplomacy, expanding its influence across the developing world. Furthermore, backed by state funding and domestic suppliers, the wide body is expected to cost much less than the Boeing 787, offering airlines a cost-effective option with operating costs 15 to 17 percent lower per seat kilometer than the Dreamliner. Russia's ultimate goal is not to return to the Western market, but to build an independent aviation ecosystem free from Western influence. In this way, the aircraft became not just a commercial product, but also a symbol of resilience and a strategic tool in Russia's broader geopolitical strategy. Fasten your seat belts for a pleasant flight. Goodbye and see you again.